joined by Jamie Snyder. Jamie, thanks very much for coming on, mate. How are you doing? I'm all good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. We'll go and start off with the quick fire questions, put you under a wee bit of pressure, if that's all right. Bring it on. Your go-to karaoke song? I sang a few, to be fair. Uh, done a bit of Justin Bieber in the past. It's a big risk, though. Uh, now, I'll go to classic, Stand By Me. Your favourite film? Um, uh, classic again, Shawshank Redemption. Your favourite food? A tough one. I love my food. Um, I love like Asian food and that, but I think Italian probably just picked it. Um, your favourite drink? Drink? Yeah. Um, professional water. Nah. <laughs> Come on. Nah. Uh, depends the setting. I like a wee, I like a wee glass of red wine with food and that, but um. I'll stick, I'll stick with that. The best stadium that you've played in? Um, probably Ibrox. Aye. The best player that you've played against? Tough one again. Um, probably in terms of career, Jermaine Defoe. That's a good shout. Aye, I'll go for that. What about this season? Who's the best player in the championship you've played against? Uh, be fair, I've no, I've not played a whole lot of league games, so um, trying. But we played against Aberdeen in the cup as well. They had the right good two players going forward as well. Um, probably the Aberdeen forwards. I try to kind of think anything else. Now. Your biggest achievement in football so far? Um, I mean, the only thing I've actually won was the League One title a couple of years ago with Thistle. Um, I was quite chuffed with a couple of the accomplishments I got last year in terms of the clean sheet records and then the player of the year at the end of it. Um, sorry. Yeah. The biggest moaner that you've played with? Biggest moaner? Oh, it's been a week for um, It's usually all the older ones for some reason. I don't know why that is. But, uh, probably in the current squad, Brian Graham loves a, loves a moan, but uh, it's, it's, it's all means well. So we'll get into it, mate. Let's start off your early football memories. Um, kind of just going to the I was a Hearts fan growing up so uh, my sister loves football as well my older sister so uh, she always took me to the games we had a season ticket at Tyncastle so most memories are just going to Tyncastle every week to, to watch Hearts and uh, kicking the ball about the back garden with my dad and my sister And how did you end up getting picked up by Hearts? How did that opportunity come up? I was I played for a boys club for sort of from when I was about four to nine um, they, they folded so then I joined a new boys club nearby and um, had a really good sort of few months was sort of making world of the saves every week and that and uh, I think a heart scout was just sort of kicking about and gave my dad a ring and said come in and train so that was probably, that was just like me living the dream like oh my god my, my boyhood club have asked me to come and train so I went in got the kit on absolutely buzzing and all that and uh, no I done, I done well and they signed me then so I think I was about I think I was nine when I signed at Hearts your dad must have been absolute buzzing with that, eh? What was he like? Aye, whole family were just like amazed, like all of a sudden I'm playing for playing for hearts and had to stop one of the games. That, that was the only bad side because uh, we had games on a Saturday as well, so I couldn't go to Tincastle anymore. But um I just at that age it just feels like you're living the dream, just playing for the club you love, wearing the wearing the kit with the badge on it, and that's mad. And what sort of grounding did it did it give you coming through at Hearts? Uh I so it taught me a lot because uh, obviously the coaching you get there more than anything else is amazing. We had sort of dedicated goalie coach my whole sort of upbringing, which you don't know sometimes get at other clubs. Um, so I sort of think my fundamentals as a sort of technical goalkeeper really came for that, that first few years at Hearts and uh, sort of gave me that base as a as a goalkeeper to go and sort of improve for there. Um, and as I say, just the professionalism of the whole club. It's just it's such a it's a renowned youth academy, isn't it? As well, so Aye. it was a it was a great place to be growing up at that age. And obviously coming through at Hearts, end up getting released. I was I was reading a wee bit about it, and it was saying like you were really highly rated and stuff. Um, sort of coming through the youth ranks. Why? What was the reason for being released? <coughs> Why um, did you find that out? I was sixteen. I think it was 16, so it was, um, I'd left school and uh, decided to sort of just go to college and part-time and sort of went full-time at Hearts for that year. 
So I was uh, was training with Alan Colton, the goalie coach, and Jay McDonald, Mark Richards, Jack Hamlin. So it was a really good group. I was training with full time in that, and I was loving it. Um, sort of in and around the first team again, just living the dream, just loving every second. And then that was the the sort of year they got relegated, and they were struggling with it financially and things like that. So um, at the end of that season, the whole the whole club really changed. Um, I think majority of the playing staff all left. Um, the hierarchy all changed as well. Robbie Nielsen got the job. Um, so it wasn't until really late that summer that actually I found out I was just um, going to get released. So I was a wee bit of a shock just because, as you said, like I'd done really well that season and, and things were going good. But, um, you know, looking back, everything happens for a reason. And uh, I think it was for the best and then that happened. And the move to cow the beef, that must have been a humbling experience for you. It was a it was a tough couple like uh, it was a tough couple of weeks. Um, so obviously I thought I was had a right good chance of going back into Hearts for pre-season. Um, and you know, like a couple of days later, I was sort of my dad was on the phone trying to get me trials anywhere he could. So uh, I ended up getting a call for the the Cowden Beef goalie coach at the time. It was Scott Thompson, uh, Robert Thompson's dad, who was the goalie. He said, "Come in and have a training session." I went and sort of an Ashton Turf away out into Dunfermline. Um, <laughs> I was like, uh, but again, I was in and around the first team, so it was still quite a tough, like a, a nerve wracking experience. But um, no, I actually really enjoyed it. I sort of done well on trial. And, um, they sort of just said, I think that the second choice keeper at the time sort of left early in pre season. And uh, they sort of just said, there's, there's an opportunity for you to sit on the bench and come in and sort of train. They were full time that year as well because they were in the championship. Um, so it was still a really good opportunity. So I thought, I why not give it a bash? And, how much do you think that benefited you looking back now? I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me, 100%. Um, as I said, yeah, like getting released to Hearts at the time, I was I was heartbroken as a wee boy at that age. And uh, it was a tough one. But looking back, um, 100%, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I could have quite easily, if I stayed at Hearts, maybe spent the next two or three years sitting in the reserves or playing youth football. You know, I would have been two or three years down the line having sort of not being in around the first team environment with a game. Um, but being at Cowden Beath in the championship on the bench, you know, it was a, a good experience that year, sort of seeing what, what actually goes on in men's football. And um, and obviously the next couple of years after that, I ended up playing first team games at sort of 18, 19, which was just invaluable looking back. You know, it's just not better that age to actually get that experience behind you. And it, it, it sort of gets people noticing you as well. So that was massive. Is that a piece of advice that you would pass on to younger players now that, it's not necessarily a bad thing to take the, the step backwards to then go forwards. Yeah, hundred percent. Um I think a lot of boys love love the idea of being at a big club, you know, these these top sort of four or five in Scotland. Um, you know, they want to be there and you know, fair enough, they're great clubs to be at. But as I said, like you can end up sort of nineteen twenty and not having played a first team game. And that's that's always going to be a struggle then going into a first team environment at that age without that experience. So I would, it's, it's a hard one because, you know, you kind of turn down these opportunities. But at the same time, if you do get the chance to go and take a step out in a league or two and you know you're going to start playing, 100% do it because it's, as I say, that's the best thing that happens. I think a lot of younger players are just kind of stuck in their comfort zone. Aye, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good life for that age. You know, they've, they've got it all sort of handed to them. Um, you know, they've got good facilities. It's good training. It's a comfortable life. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more important to go and play at a good level, even though it might not feel like a good level because of where you're at. But, um, 100%, I think it's it's more important you go play first team football, even if it is lower down leagues. Because looking back on your career, you don't know what have any regrets. And if you sort of get to 20 without having played many games, then you might have that regret. What if I'd maybe taken a step backwards, got my name out there a bit more. And when did you first see the interest with Thistle? Uh, it was my last year. At, I was at Cowdenby for three years and uh, we were in League Two by that point. So back to back relegations. I'd, I'd, um, it was a tough time, but um, I was playing playing really well in League Two and um, my contract was up at the end of the season. So I'd, I'd heard that there were sort of a few clubs sniffing about and the third that a sort of young keeper was playing games. It's, that's always a, a sort of rare thing almost. Um, so I'd done really well in League Two and um, I'd heard. A few clubs had been interested. And I went and trained on a few different clubs. I had a few weeks where I went 
to different clubs. I was in at Hibs, I was in at um, St Johnston. I got a week down at Blackburn, um, and then a week at Thistle as well. So it was all it was all a bit mad that season, to be honest. But it was really exciting as well. Um, but in the end, Thistle were the, the club who really showed a, a proper interest in actually doing something about it and, and getting me at the end of the season because uh, Cowden Beath would, were due compensation, which put a lot of clubs off. Uh, no, Thistle were really sort of keen on getting me, which which really made me feel good. So um, I think towards the end of that season, they were they were sort of still in touch and sort of saying, "Now oh, we'll get things sorted in the summer," and that so it was it was a good thing. Did you feel as if that was the club that was best for the, a path, well a pathway towards? the first team and being the number one. Yeah, because I heard nothing but good things about the club and, you know, they've got a, a record, a track record for bringing through youth players as well. Um, so, yeah, I was sort of weighing all these things up and, again, it's, it's an opportunity you can't turn down jumping for Cowden Beath in League 2 to Partick Thistle who just finished top six in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a really exciting summer when they sort of signed me. It was a, a huge change football and wise and in my life. Um, I, again, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted with it because I've loved it ever since. You touched on it earlier, winning League One. Talk to me about the turnaround there because, I mean, he's were absolutely nowhere to be seen, really. I mean, he's just going on a mental winning run, eh? I know. Uh, let's just paper over the, the two relegations that I'd had after signing for nah, this. We'll I wasn't involved in them. <laughs> I wasn't involved in them. Um, but I've got a few of them to my name, more than I could to mention. But I, it was good to to finally win something and be at the right end of a league, as you said. Because um, that was just a crazy COVID season. So um, I think it was a shortened league. We played 27 games. The first few months of that season was probably the, my toughest time in football in life, to be honest with you. Um, I had a real tough few months when, like, personal life and um, injury-wise as well. I had a, a bad injury to my knee, which got operated on and then it was a complication where I got infected and that so I was ended up being back in hospital and things like that it was actually really scary for a period but um, I got back playing sort of January, February that season and as you said we were sort of mid-table in League One things weren't going great but then um, I we started playing like Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday uh, sorry Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday like two, three weeks in a row and it was just game after game after game and I managed to get back in the team with about 10 games to go and uh, I would just just started winning and scoring about five goals every game. It was mental. And um, just destroying every team somehow. And uh, I think it was it was Falkirk up the top of the league. They were sort of crumbling a bit and there was teams in around us starting as well. So uh, it all just sort of fell into place and we just sort of felt invincible that, that last sort of few games of the season. It was just the best feeling ever that that, um, that game against Falkirk and for how we won the league. So it was just such a comfortable game as well. It was just such a good night. You did, you, you've touched on it. I wasn't going to the relegation. You brought this upon yourself. Jake, from a selfish point of view, it's worked in your favour the fact that you've ended up in the corner. Gave you more game time. Again, I, you could say it all, it all sort of happened for a reason. But um, yeah, if maybe if we'd stayed in the Premiership after I signed, I'd still sort of be sort of second or third choice. But yeah, we got relegated to the Championship and I managed to sort of play a few games in the first team, which was, again, at that age, amazing experience. And then uh, during COVID, we got relegated. A lot of people would say very unfairly. Um, for two points behind a game in hand in January. Um, so it was a really tough pill to swallow at the time because, you know, everyone's finances got cut and all that. So it was a, a tough one to swallow. But um, looking back, you know, I wouldn't have won that league if that didn't happen. I wouldn't have had that amazing moments and games under my belt if that didn't happen. So, uh, and then uh, it's it's worked out really well we managed to bounce back straight away have a really great season and then sort of get back where we belong Do you think the way that you were relegated kind of gave you the fire in the belly to then go up again? I was always in the back of our head 100% you know um, I don't think the gaffer even really needed to use it as motivation because boys were already hurting after sort of taking the wage cuts and things like that um, everyone in around the club taking wage cuts it was tough but um as you said, it was just about, you know, what can we control? We can just get promoted right back right back again. So, thank God we managed to do that because it's a tough league to get out of. Tell, talk to me a wee bit about um, Ian McCall. What's he like to work under? Uh, he's been good. He's sort of, I don't know, you're smirking there for some reason. I just <laughs> think he's funny, man. <laughs> uh, you get a lot, of, a lot of banter from him anyway. Um, 
But aye, he's, he's had a great a managerial career. He's been at some big clubs and managed some big players and, you know, kicked kicked a lot of good players on. So, uh, yeah, he's got a great, great reputation for a reason. Uh, aye, he's done well since he came to the club. So, yeah, it's good. What's what's the worst that you've ever seen him lose it? Um, to be fair, I've, like you hear he's absolutely like nuts in terms of losing it all the time, but I've not seen that a lot in my, my few years under him. Um, there have been a few here and there. A, a table might have been flipped at one point, but um, I think that's as bad as it got. And you touched on it earlier, saying about um, obviously the clean sheet record. That's pretty incredible for your age, eh? I know it's, it's last season again, it was, I think it was about this time last year, sort of November, December. Um, we were just on our own, just the defence was so solid. Um, I was doing my job when I was sort of needed to, and um, just kept coming clean sheet after clean sheet. And before I knew it, we'd kept eight in a row, and it was just like, How's that happen? <laughs> it just it didn't feel like anything special at the time, but sort of looking back, I'm like, Eight clean sheets in a row is just like unheard of. Like, the thought of doing that now just seems impossible, but um. Uh, at the time, it was just such a such a high, and then you see, sorry, every week a, a new record get getting broken, and it was just such a good feeling. And as you said, it uh, almost I was twenty four at the time, so um, yeah, it was hopefully still young in terms of my career and as a goalkeeper. So it's it's good to have these experiences under my belt already. The keepers set targets for clean sheets the same way that strikers would for goals. Yeah, uh, I probably yeah. Um, obviously, you never know the way a season's going to pan out. Can end up picking up an injury or being out of the team here and there, so it's tough. But um, I'm no massively into that setting, sort of set a number I want to get, um, especially after last season, because I'm probably going to get nowhere near that. But uh, I try and just take it game by game. And you know, if you, if you manage to keep one, then you, you sort of usually start getting a few more the, the weeks after that. Um, it's all about just having a bit of a settled defense for the end, sort of all being confident and comfortable with each other. And, um, Sometimes it just seems to click in a place, and the more you keep, the easier they get. Something. I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't bring it up. The goal scoring goalkeeper, talk me through that. Celebration needs work, but you'll get there with that. Eh? <laughs> I think that's that's what I've been known as last week. That'll probably be what I'm known as for the rest of my career. <laughs> it's just such a such a unique, rare moment. Um, I so that was it's been about nine days, and it's still all anyone's talking to me about. But. Uh, no, I'll never get sick of it. But uh, as you said, the celebration was miles off it. But uh, just as soon as that ball hit the net, all I can remember is just thinking, like, just a, like a pure mad, like, it's like, why is this happen? Why is this just happened to me? Like, how's this just happened? Like, is this real? Like, it was just such a blur of the whole thing. And uh, but I, I just, I'm not gonna lie. I keep watching the video back, and uh, <laughs> it just gets better every time I watch it. But um, no, it's just. It was just amazing, and it's a good memory to have. One that I can always look back on, just say like, "Wow, what a what an experience!" Next contract, just say we don't need to be a goal bonus in that. Hundred eh? <laughs> uh, percent. That will happen again, right enough. But uh, no, I asked the gaffer on the bus back down. I said, "What's the goal bonus?" And he was like, "I'll put it politely, but he said I get lost." <laughs> <laughs> and how did you sum up the season so far? The first half of it. Uh, very mixed. Um, as a team and personally, um, we, we started the season really well. I've, I wasn't in the team the first the first few months, um, but now the boys were flying. We're sort of unstoppable at home, um, doing really well away. We were right up the top of the league. Maybe a couple of draws that we should have won would have been nice to have that few extra points. But um, yeah, we, we sort of had a really tough period where we had sort of five or six games in a two week period. Um, the first one being against Aberdeen, which was a really tough place to go. Um, they beat us 4 0, which to be fair was probably a fair result, but it was, it was no, not terrible, like it was a bad result, but it's, yeah. we were expected to get beat. Um, but then that ended up being the start of a really bad run, which was disappointing. But um, we lost a lot of bodies in that sort of two week period, like a lot of key players out injured. Um, Kevin Hall got injured in that first half at Aberdeen. He's sort of he was a rock for us at centre back over the last sort of few months. Um, so it's been tough losing him. We lost a few other boys in the spine of the team as well, which I don't think didn't help. Um, but you know, every team's going to have blips over the course of a season. I think ours maybe just went on a bit longer than we would have expected. 
hopefully, you know, the last, the last few results have looked a bit more promising. So hopefully we're, we're turning the corner now and start sort of climbing back up again. What's the aims for the second half of the season? Get involved in the playoffs again? Yeah, definitely. Um, that was the sort of the target at the start of the season, sort of take it for the playoffs and sort of see where we could end up. But, um, obviously, we're out of them at the moment, so it's, it's up to us to make sure we we turn the corner, as I said, and sort of get back in the mix because it's the, it's the least that the supporters expect is, is to be in those playoffs at the end of the season on the expectations at the start. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough because there's it's just such a competitive league as it always is. You know, anyone can be anyone. Everyone says that, but it's true. Um, it's just never easy to get three points. But, um, you know, we need to start getting them because, as we said, fourth is the minimum expectation for us. Definitely. Well, all the best for the rest of the season, Jamie. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. No worries. Thanks very much for having me.